what we're going to try and do today, one of the big things is we're going to try and make sure we can get that buck where we need it to be for the shot. We're talking bow season here, so you know we're hoping to get that shot down in that 20 to 30 yard range. And one of the best things you can do to get that set up is to do a mock scrape. We're going to actually make the mock scrape tree itself. So as you can see here, we've got some nice cedars. Cedars are one of the best trees you can use when it comes to making a mock scrape. And uh, they just like the smell of it. You know, I think it holds the, the scent better on the licking branch and stuff. And for some reason that just seems to be key. So we're gonna be using that. And as you can see here, this tree, as it stands from the ground, is probably about uh, 10 to 12 feet. So it's a pretty tall tree. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it down and we're actually gonna kill this tree. We're gonna cut it down and we're gonna take it out there and we're gonna plant it in the ground about three feet down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by clearing off the branches for the first three feet just to bury it into the ground. I'm gonna get that done while it's all standing up and easy to access. And then once I get done clearing off the three feet for planting it, so to speak, in the ground, then I need to go ahead and clear off more branches up to about chest height. You know, so we're talking, you want to have it cleared to when it's in the ground setting there, it's going to be, you know, maybe about the first five feet bare of branches. So all the branches, the licking branches, are going to be about chest height and above. As you can see, I've got the old fashioned pole cutter. You don't want to use a chainsaw, something that's going to be spewing exhaust and stuff like that and oil all over the tree you know you're trying to make this look natural even though it's going to be in a place where there wasn't a tree just earlier today so you want it to smell as natural as possible so i'm using a pole saw that way i can trim the thing from about six feet away i'm going to try and move it with gloves as best as possible you know you're going to get some human scent on it but you're going to try and reduce it as much as possible i've got it that far and I don't want to take off too much right now, so I've got it to where I can easily plant the first three feet in the ground, which should leave about three feet coming up. And I'm gonna go out there, get it planted first, and then fine tune the rest of the trimming so I don't take off too much accidentally. Can't put it back on once you take it off very easy. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and cut that tree off as close to the base as possible. And then we'll bring the old truck around here and get her loaded up, head out and get this tree planted. The next thing that we're going to do is pick the actual spot. Now, tree stand is up there in the tree. You can see the straps kind of hanging around it. That's where I'm going to be sitting. I'm going to be hunting that since all the covers out this way. I'm going to be hunting that when the wind is shooting out that way. So I want to keep that in mind. You always want to keep that in mind when you go to plant a scrape tree. Where are you going to be hunting? In what wind? and what direction do you need that scrape to be so the wind is going away from you so you're not putting yourself into a situation where you're drawing those bucks into where they're going to smell you. There's a trail that comes out of the heavy cover right here, comes out of the bedding area back there. That's uh, all cattail marsh and stuff. There's another trail that comes here from the neighbor's property, cuts right through there, and another trail that comes right up through there. So this is the convergence of three different trails. And I've went ahead and ranged find it how do you say that range found i used the range finder used the hawk range finder to determine that right here is 20 yards from that spot in the most open opportune spot for me to be able to get my bow drawn before they get here and be able to shoot a buck while he's standing right here so i'm going to set it at 20 yards because if you have one come through one of these trails up here and he just decides he's going to try and scent check it because the wind's blowing out that way if he comes out here and scent, che you know, scent checks it from 15 yards away, now your 20 yard shot just became a 35 yard shot. So I'm setting it closer, kind of like you would with a turkey decoy or something like that. I'm setting it closer in case they hang up. 20 yards, if they come to this and they're calm, cool and collected and they're working the scrape, I got a perfect shot. But if they're nervous, they're back there a little ways, they're still within my 40 and under range. So I'm going to dig this hole about three feet deep plant that tree in it, tamp it down, and that's all there is to it. And then we'll continue with getting the scrape set up after the tree's planted. All I'm gonna do 
picked the tree up. I've got the gloves on again because I want to try and kill as much scent as possible getting on this tree. I want it to smell as natural to them as possible. I'm going to get the tree in the hole, get it kind of seated in, bring some of that dirt in and just start tamping it around. Just try and lock it in as solid as possible. You don't want this thing blowing over in a big storm or something that kind of ruins the whole scrape thing. So obviously it's not set in there, but when you're thinking about how you're going to set this before I start tamping it in place, I need to kind of look it over and say, where do I want things? I need to figure out number one, where is the licking branch going to be? What's the best licking branch scenario? All right, so this is probably going to be our licking branch. The stand is up there. Now I got to think most likely the deer are going to come out of this area over here and I'm going to want them to be able to come in in an angle that works the best for my shot. Preferably, I'll have them face in that direction, working this branch, peeing on the scrape. So I'm going to spin this around so the licking branch is over that way in hopes that when they come out and walk to it, they're facing that direction to give their head away from me a little bit, a chance to draw my bow, and then I'll be shooting broadside or slightly quartered away, which is your best option. So I'm going to spin this around, put some dirt in, and start taking it down. Now it's in good and solid. Now I need to look through here and say, what pruning do I need to do? This is going to be my main licking branch right here. I want this to be out of the way. I also don't want it blocking shots. So we're going to get rid of that piece. This piece in here. You want it to look as natural as possible, but still not be a situation where it's going to block the shot for you. I think over on this side here, we'll get rid of this big one because it could potentially block other shots down the road. So I'm envisioning this buck coming from this way or this way. It's going to come in. This is the licking branch here. So he's going to be working the scrape like this. So take this rake. Just going to start roughing it up in here. Try and expose that bare dirt as much as possible. Hey, farmer's going to love this. And now the secret weapon to finish this thing out. Now, hopefully, this will get them coming to it just because it's going to be a convenient place for them to make a scrape. They're going to think that there's competition in the area, but we're going to make sure that they know there's competition in the area. Hightower products, if you haven't checked them out, they've got some awesome products, you know, from food plot seeds to minerals and stuff like that. I love using their HD 200 to, you know, keep the deer supplemented throughout the year. It helps with those racks. But this here they make, it's called the licking branch and this thing is sweet. So here's all you do. One pack comes with two licking branches, so I can actually do two mock scrapes with this. That's the licking branch there. As you can see, it comes with ties, and those ties go through these holes so I can tie it right to the branch there. But we're not done yet. These here are little scent pads. What I'm gonna do once I get this thing hooked up there, they have it comes in the kit with the two licking branches. This is Smokey's preorbital gland lure, and this uses the preorbital gland, which is right up by the eyes. And the thing that's so cool about this Smokey's preorbital gland lure here is it's actually made with four different bucks. You know, so they collect the preorbital gland from four different bucks and put it in here. So when you're putting that up there, it doesn't smell like just one buck. It smells like four different bucks. So it smells like there's already competition in the area and makes them want to work this scrape. Now you just keep this on the licking branch. You don't want to put this down in the scrape. They're not rubbing their eyes down there. They're peeing down there. It's tarsal, gland, scent, stuff like that that's happening down there. Preorbital all stays up on the licking branch. So I'm going to take this, once I get this put up here, and apply a couple drops per pad of the preorbital gland so it gets things started off quick and you only have to reapply it about every couple weeks put a couple more drops on as you can see doing a couple drops at a time that'll last for a long time so we're gonna get this hooked up 
and then we're just about all set here. We've got our tree planted. We've got it 20 yards away from the stand. It's set up for a good broadside or slightly quartered away shot. We've got our high tower products licking branch set up with the preorbital gland lure on it. That takes care of the scent up here, but they need to know that something's happening down here or else it's not really a scrape. That's where Grave Digger from Code Blue comes in. If you guys haven't tried this stuff, this stuff's sweet. It's white tail scrape mate. Ooh, does that smell good? And if you can see in there, it basically looks like dirt. It smells like you dug up a scrape and put it in a bottle. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take the heel of my boot, I'm gonna dig a little hole in the center of the scrape, I'm gonna pour about half of this in there, in that hole, and then cover it back up. And I'm gonna take a little bit more after that and sprinkle it just loosely in the top. And that's gonna allow the moisture will actually keep bringing that scent up to the top from that hole that you bury right there. It's going to give them the right smell at the bottom, the right smell at top, and then you've got your set completely ready to go. The only other thing left to do, the tact cam reveal, get her set up. You know, I've got that one set up about eight yards away, and that way you can tell what's hitting it when. You can start to pattern these deer and uh, be ready for season. So. Hopefully we'll get these deer coming in, get some good pictures, some good intel, figure out what's hitting it when, and know when to be in that stand right there. And hopefully we'll get some good pictures to show you of a buck in the future.